Brianna, thank you. Hi there, I'm Brooke Baldwin. You are watching CNN. Uh, another day, another threat from President Trump. And today, he is threatening to shut down the southern border as early as next week. Speaking in Florida today, the president told reporters that he was ready to close the border completely, including to all trade with Mexico if the country does not immediately stop all immigration coming into the United States. They have the strongest immigration laws anywhere in the world. And we have the weakest, the most pathetic laws. Number one, Congress has to act. And number two, Mexico, they make so much money from the United States and so many other things, so many other assets. They have to grab it and they have to stop it. And if they don't stop them, we're closing the border. They'll close it and we'll, we'll keep it closed for a long time. I'm not playing games. This follows comments by Trump's top border security officials saying that the border is at a quote unquote breaking point. Ed Lavendera is our go to guy on this. He's along the southern border in Brownsville, Texas. And, and you heard the president say he's not playing games. I mean, he, he's he's made these threats before, Ed. But what's different this time? Well, what's different is you, this is coming on the heels of what you're hearing repeatedly and the drumbeat you've heard repeatedly here from uh, Department of Homeland Security and Customs and Border Protection officials here over the course of the last few weeks who say uh, that there is essentially at a breaking point that the system is completely overwhelmed with the numbers of people who are uh, coming across. Uh, CBP commissioner says that uh, in March alone they're expecting as many as 100,000 illegal appreh or apprehensions along the U.S. southern border which would be the highest number they've seen uh, in more in about a decade or so. So uh, that is what is different here. Although you will hear repeatedly from immigrant rights activists and uh, critics of the Trump administration who insist that the federal government has plenty of resources and means in place to process the numbers that they're seeing. Uh, and that is the struggle that you're seeing going on between these two sides. Ed Lavendera in Brownsville. Ed, thank you. You know, Trump is also going after asylum seekers at a rally in Michigan. He mocked their asylum claims and acted out how they might try to, quote, con their way into the U.S. You have people coming up. You, you know, they're all met by the lawyers, the lawyers of, and they come out. They're all met by the lawyers and they say, say the following phrase. I am very afraid for my life. I am afraid for my life. Okay. And then I look at the guy. He looks like he just got out of the ring. He's the heavyweight champion of the world. He's afraid for his life. It's a big, fat con job, folks. Angeline Chen is an immigration attorney and co-founder of Rise to Reunite, a nonprofit fighting for the rights of immigrant families. So, Angeline, thank you for being with me today. And when, when you sir, first saw the president say that, do that, what were you thinking? Well, you know, I'm a co-founder of a, a volunteer group called Rise to Reunite, where we bring volunteer attorneys to the border. Um, <clears throat> volunteer for a nonprofit organization called Al Otro Lado. And this is preposterous um, that what we're doing, what other immigration attorney mothers and, and lawyers are doing at the border and here in the U.S. that it's a big fat con job is, is absolutely ridiculous. I have personally seen thousands of refugees um, in Tijuana when the Central American exodus arrived there with my own eyes. They were in a sports complex outdoor, outside um, and they were stacked up like sardines on blankets, they're makeshift tents. They were not, you know, individuals who look like boxers or heavyweight champions of the world. They were malnourished. Um, they looked like they had been traveling thousands of miles because they have been. I saw women and little babies. I had held a six month old in my arms who looked like he was two months old. This is what we're dealing with. People are fleeing poverty and gang violence and domestic violence. It, this is not a con job. I hear you. It's preposterous, but what Trump said last night, it is gaining steam. You know, we've talked to local law enforcement officials, and now you have the president of the United States last night saying that there are people now starting to question what they consider sob stories, you know, stories quite similar to others that some local law enforcement think that maybe they are following the script. And is it possible that certain people know what works, what to say to get in? Well, as an attorney who's licensed by the state bar and who's been practicing immigration for 15 years, I know many, many immigration attorneys. 
We do not teach them how to lie. We do not, uh, we are not allowed to. We can lose our license. We tell them what the legal process is and how to abide by the law. Mm -hmm. And when we're at the border, we specifically tell them, do not cross the border through the hills, through a coyote, um, climb over the fence, because if you do, you will die, or you will get raped, or you will be trafficked, or, you, or your kids will be taken away from you. We specifically tell them to go by the law, which is to go to the port of entry, put your name on a wait list, mm -hmm. and wait possibly months to enter through the port of entry and seek asylum. How? We also ask them, go ahead. Just how are their asylum claims verified? Uh, so what we do at the border, we first ask them a lot of questions about why they're here, what happened to them. Um, it, it's, it's required to show that uh, to qualify for asylum that you fear being persecuted based on race, nationality, religion, a particular social group or political opinion. So we go through that with them. Because if it's not a strong case, we tell them, this is a very weak case. You will most likely lose. Don't mm. even try to cross. Mm. You will get detained and you may get deported. Now, we're not the official bodies who determine this, obviously, but based on case law and from the experience that we have, uh, you know, we can g give them more, a better sense whether or not they qualify or not. I understand. I was so just we're talking helping our, the government. Talking, sure, sure. And, and just to remind everyone watching, talking to Ed Lavendera, who's our correspondent down there, reminding me earlier on the phone today, it's very difficult to win an asylum case. You know, just because you're requesting it doesn't mean you get it whatsoever. Uh, I would be remiss, Angeline, not to ask you about the, the, the reporting or the tweets um, from this president, how he's threatening to shut down the U.S.-Mexico border as early as next week. Can you just tell me what, what impact would closing parts of the border have? Well, you have thousands of people waiting already in Tijuana to uh, waiting in line to enter through the port of entry. The border is technically pretty much closed already because only 25 to 40 individuals come in every day. Um, and there are thousands of people waiting in shelters that are, you know, run by volunteers and churches. It's not government entities. So this is going to be a, a serious problem. Where are these post people supposed to go, especially for unaccompanied minors who are not even allowed to get on this wait list? And they're, they're trying to, you know, seek asylum at the port of entry, and they need to come to us, to the legal, to, to the attorneys to help them cross the port, you know, to go to the port of entry. Hopefully they will enter. I went with a group of seven immigration attorney mothers and we accompanied an unaccompanied minor to the port of entry and they made us wait seven hours and they still didn't let her through the port of entry. So this is a serious problem. Yep. I, we appreciate you. appreciate the work that you do. Um, Angeline Chen, thank you very much. Thank you.